Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on channels, television, Lagos. A quick reminder of our top stories now. President Muhammad Buhari demands stricter laws to prevent girls from being abused in schools across the country. As the world marks International Day of the Girl Child, Lagos State Government and its partners educate students on the need to stand strong. Federal government bans international travel for executive cabinet members and heads of government agencies ahead of budget defense at the National Assembly. And NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg raises concern over Turkey's escalating military operations in northern, northeastern Syria as over 100,000 residents flee their homes. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, it's channelstv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channels web has videos of our shows. The Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, sitting in Yola, the Adamo State Capitol, has dismissed a petition filed by the All Progressives Congress challenging the election of Governor Ahmadu Fintiri of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. The tribunal, headed by Justice Adediran, while giving its judgment on the petition, declared that the petitions lack merit. The tribunal chairman said that the petitioner also failed to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt. He ruled that the petitioner could not prove any case of overvoting and non-compliance, as well as irregularities during the March 2019 rerun governorship elections in the state. The tribunal judge also pointed out that the witnesses of the petitioner were inconsistent in their submissions, prompting him to discard their submissions. You're watching the News at 10 on Channel Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's quickly switch, shift over now to our Buja studios, where Ibrahim Adra is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Ibrahim, good to see you. Good to see you, Gimba. Let's stay with the courts. The Court of Appeal has upheld the ruling of the Kogi State Senatorial Election Petition Tribunal, which sacked the lawmaker representing Kogi West Senator Dino Melai and ordered a fresh election. A three-man panel of the court, led by Justice Deti Haya, in a unanimous judgment, held that the lawmaker could not prove the allegations that he was not given a fair hearing by the lower tribunal. It therefore upheld the majority judgment of the panel had the petitioner, Senator Smart Ademi, prove allegations of malpractice, mutilation of result sheets, and overvoting. The court then ordered INEC to conduct a fresh election within 90 days from today. Senator Smart Ademi of the All Progressives Congress had challenged Senator Melaye's election on the grounds of irregularities and non-compliance with the Electoral Act. And meanwhile, the key players in that legal tussle have been reacting to the ruling of the Court of Appeal today, ordering a fresh election for the Kogewa senatorial seat. Both Senators Dino Melae and Smart Ademi have spoken exclusively to Channels Television. Senator Melae, who is representing the constituency, says the judgment is a travesty of justice and that though he may have lost this time, he is confident of defeating his opponent at the rescheduled poll. For me, it's a travesty of justice. It's a loud mockery of the judiciary. But one fundamental thing I will say this morning is this. It does not matter the number of times Saul came after David. David will always prevail. My name is Daniel. I cannot fail. I will always win. I am not perturbed. I'm not disturbed. There's no tension. You can see I'm excited. I'm happy. We will go back to the trenches. And I want to assure you that the people's voice will be loud again. Smart Adeyemi is my political wife. I was in APC. I contested against him in PDP. I defeated him. I came to PDP. He went to APC. I will defeat him. That's 2 0. We are going back for the third time. <laughs> it will be a hard trick. I will score the third goal. Now, Senator Smart Ademi reacts by saying that the outcome has boosted his faith in the Nigerian judiciary as at the last hope of the common man. The APC candidate believes his opponent of the PDP has never won elections and that the rescheduled contest affords him an opportunity to prove that. 
appear that the judiciary once again have uh, been able to prove that uh, is the last hope of the uh, common man, and uh, they've been able to um, pass their, ju their verdict, their judgment, that that result was not the result of the election that we, we participated. In essence, the results were was, was, uh, was, was tampered with, was, was mutilated. The result was forged. The result was not original. It was not what is tenable in any court of law. It was not something that should be uh, respected to be given any valid. So Dino had never won an election. Even in 2015, I can prove to you that Dino never won the election. The judge that took that, um, that preserved our case, where is she today? She was sent out of the profession because it was established. She, she, she had to resign. So Dino, Dino never won an election. Well, there you have it. Now, while the senatorial gladiators await their contest, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, is warning political parties in the November 16th Kogi governorship election against violence that could destabilize the exercise. Professor Yakubu, who was speaking in Lokoja, the state capital, during a stakeholders' meeting, emphasized that the commission is only interested in conducting a free, fair, and credible election. Convened by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the meeting is to dialogue with political parties and their supporters on how to conduct a peaceful election. Present are heads of security agencies within the state, civil society, party governorship candidates and their running mates. The Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operation assures stakeholders of neutrality of the force during the election, warning those intending to employ fake uniformed men to disrupt the exercise to have a rethink. We are ready for the election. We have always been ready for this. Some aspirants are also trying to organize their own private army. This we have taken notice of. For the INIC chairman, the commission is more than ready to conduct a free, fair and transparent election. We will do our best to ensure that the process is protected and the integrity of the process is assured. INEC is not a political party. We are not interested in any candidate. We are only interested in the processes that will lead to credible outcome. It's the turn of political parties to air their views. And the state governor, Yahya Bello, is the first to speak. He dismisses talk of pre-election violence. The issue of election violence in Kogi State is not exactly how it has been peddled or what is happening in Kogi State that it has been reported in the media. Reverse is the case. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Musa Wada, calls on the security agencies to organize a campaign to mop up arms. There are suspicions of arms and ammunition in unofficial and undesignated areas and there's a government and security agency in places that should even be investigated and dealt with. As the event comes to an end, the desire of all participants is that security agencies will live up to expectations before and after the election in Kogi State. Now to security. As part of a broad initiative to secure Anambra State, Governor Willie Obiano today launched the state's integrated security system and smart city surveillance system. The launch marks the second phase of Operation Pochapu, involving the use of smart vehicles, CCTV cameras and other surveillance equipment to be deployed in the three major cities across the state. The Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, received the vehicles and equipment on behalf of all security agencies in the state. The launch of the second phase of Operation Pochapo, a security initiative using advanced technology to combat crime, is the reason for this gathering at the Dr. Alex Equeme Square, Oka, the Anambra State Capital. We are talking about his excellency. Governor Willie Obiano and the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, make their way into the venue of the event, among other dignitaries. And other security agencies in Anambra State. Then it was time for the display of the 111 super smart security vehicles and the 79 smart bikes, clearly marked for different security agencies. In addition to the patrol vehicles, is the smart city surveillance system equipment powered 24 hours with solar energy for effective operation, an outcome of the governor's visit to Boston, Massachusetts last year. 
For the governor, the first phase of Operation Pochapo came with 100 vehicles as kidnappers' dens and hideouts were demolished. But the second phase has been reinvented to fulfill its mandate of wiping out criminals. The equipment came from the high-tech security company that made the gadgets used in tracking the terrorists that masterminded the infamous Boston Marathon bombing. I'm warning all criminals to disappear from Anambra State and the ones that have intention of coming not to try. The Inspector General of Police commends Governor Biano for the giant stride and urges other state governments to emulate the gesture. Any nation that is desirous of ultimate security for her citizens must, of necessity, enhance the capacity of the security agencies towards attaining their mandates. All the service commanders. Governor William Biano then hands over the keys to the smart vehicles and the smart city surveillance equipment to the Inspector General of Police to enhance the activities of the Anambra State Police Command, while the rest will go to other security agencies. The state government Real South security contact numbers 112 and 0703-919-4332. While urging the people of Anambra to get ready to come home during the Yuletide, as all machinery has been put in place for a successful and crime-free celebration. And that's all from Abuja. But when the news at 10 returns, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg raises concerns over Turkey's escalated military operation 